guys, I am the C-H-A-L-L, your content for Doncaster Rowers Football Club and welcome to today's edition of the DRFC Daily Report, bringing you the latest news, score lines, previews and transfer activity from the brilliant Donny Rovers. Now, of course, like ev after every Saturday, it's usually a big Donny Rovers DRFC Daily Reports episode because we usually talk about the championship, League One, League Two, the scoreline, the tables, of course, after match weeks. And uh, again, no different here. But also, as well as that, we're going to be talking about uh, Darren Moore's reaction to our game, our 1 0 defeat against Wigan yesterday, which, you know, it still hasn't, well, it's kind of sunk in, but it's sort of like. You don't want to accept it, kind of thing, because we did take we didn't take our chance in the first half, and it, we got made to pay for it. So we do need to be a bit more ruthless in the next game. And we're also going to be talking about Moore's uh, current status on whether he thinks the Shrewsbury game will get postponed due to international call-ups for Joseph Bursic and Tyrese John Jules in the England under squads, and also Danny Amos in the under squad for Northern Ireland. So, before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. And for now, we're going to get straight into this. Now, we're going to be talking about League 1 and League 2 scorelines from the Saturday, of course. But first of all, we're going to start off with the Championship, showing you the scores and then the league table after match week 4. Now, be warned, there are two games kicking off this afternoon, and that is, of course, Brentford playing and also Stoke playing against Birmingham as well. I think Bre In fact, no, I think Brentford's playing against Stoke, and I think it's Preston North End against Birmingham. So, I, I, it's, it's those four teams that are involved. But uh, we're going to show you the table after Saturday's fixtures, as per usual, and uh, share with you the scorelines from the Champions. So without further ado, here is the scorelines from the second tier of English football from Saturday. Norwich City 0, Derby County 1. Blackburn Rovers 0, Cardiff City 0. Luton Town 2, Wickham Wanderers 0. Middlesbrough 2, Barnsley 1. Nottingham Forest 1, Bristol City 2. Reading 1, Watford 0. Rotherham United 1, Huddersfield Town 1. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Queen's Park Rangers 1. And Swansea City 2, Millwall 1. So looking then at the championship table, the only two teams with 100% starts of the season, Dean Holden's Bristol City after that win against Nottingham Forest. And of course, Reading uh, with that win over Watford. Uh, very good starts to the season for both teams. Uh, Bournemouth and Swansea not too far behind. Bournemouth did get the uh, victory in the early Friday fixture. A 3-1 win over Coventry City away, uh, which takes them into third place. And on 10 points, Swansea joined them on 10 points after their victory. Luton's victory keeps them up to date with one of their best starts to a season in club history, in my opinion, under their manager. And Blackburn Rovers under Tony Mowbray, despite the 0-0 draw with Cardiff, are in the last playoff spot. Watford, QPR and Birmingham just outside on seven and five points respectively. Birmingham play this afternoon. Into the next eight in the table and Middlesbrough of course Neil Warnock playing his 1500th game as a manager in football and of course that um, Middlesbrough uh, results takes them into 10th place. Millwall just behind in 11th. Rotherham United having a decent start in 12th. Brentford still need to play and they're in 13th but they could go ahead of all of them and go into the top half of the table. Cardiff they're in 14th, Norwich in 15th with that early 1-0 defeat to Derby County thanks to a late Wayne Rooney free kick to give Derby a kickstart in their campaign. Uh, with their first victory of the season. So Norwich end up in mid-table. Stoke, of course, still yet to play. And if they win, they'll go into the top half of the table. Coventry and Huddersfield make up the rest of that next eight. And then finally, going into the bottom of that league, you can see Huddersfield there again. Uh, and Derby County just behind them. So that's why I've kept Huddersfield in both of these two sections of the table. That's why they're, that's why they're in both sections of the table. Because uh, Derby could go ahead of Huddersfield if they win and Huddersfield lose their next game. And of course, uh, Rotherham giving Huddersfield a decent show in that game. Um... And of course, it was that last gas goal. It was the last gas goal that denied Rotherham the victory, which gave Huddersfield that that crucial point. 
you know, they would have probably been below Derby County if the, if they didn't win that, if they didn't get a point in that match. Not even just a win, a point in that match. Uh, Preston and Barnsley make up the rest of that. Barnsley, of course, under a massive amount of scrutiny, especially after that 2-1 defeat to Middlesbrough with Gerard Struber having interest from New York. Nottingham Forest still without a win. Wickham Wanderers still without a win. And still without points even. And Sheffield Wednesday, despite the point against QPR, remain foot of the table from, on minus seven points after the points deduction um, going into the end of the previous campaign for this season. So there we go. That is looking at the championship table and scoreline. So before we chat about League One and League Two, let's chat a little bit about the championship and what's been going on uh, yesterday. So big results coming out of the championship yesterday on Saturday. A very eventful Saturday indeed. A couple of handballs maybe could have gone either way. Uh, I think Wickham were a bit unlucky in my opinion against Luton. I think that uh, they did have something waved away and then uh, obviously with the offside for Scott Cashcat's goal. And um, up the other end, Luton go and score with Elliot Lee. Um, Luton grab the three points. Luton, by the way, I've got to highlight them. You know, they're having one of their best starts to a season, in my opinion. I think Luton, you know, under the management of, of I can't remember his first name, Graham Jones, Nathan Jones, can't remember. It's Graham Jones, I think. Um, yeah, they just made a perfect start to the season. And, uh, you know, Luton... Obviously, people aren't going to assume straight away, because we're only four games into the season, so people aren't going to assume straight away, Luton's going to be in the playoff hunt. But I'll tell you what, if they are up there, I give full praise to Jones, the manager. I think that, and I give praise to the players as well, and for the board for backing Jones. Um, Blackburn Rovers, again, another good start to the season under Tony Mowbray. And, of course, we faced them in the 3-2 EFL Cup Round 1 defeat uh, at Ewood Park uh, back a couple of months ago now. Uh, well, nearly a couple months exactly. And, um, you know, they put out a good showing, we put out a good showing, but it was clear that Blackburn were going to be a special side this year, and I wasn't wrong. Uh, Adam Armstrong, obviously, it was a 0-0 draw against Cardiff yesterday, but that doesn't stop Adam Armstrong from grabbing the headlines, in my opinion. I think Adam Armstrong will definitely be one to watch. I think that Blackburn need to really keep a tight lip on him, um, because I think the slightest sniff from a Premier League club that's it. It could be go it could be all over and game over. Um, another club that's you know sparking my interest for all the wrong reasons is Nottingham Forest. I'm going to go on to Barnsley in a little bit, but Nottingham Forest. Whew, that's not a good start. They did show signs. Not going to lie, it wasn't the comfortable victory that Bristol City could have hoped for. Uh, but Bristol City keep up their you know 100% start under Dean Holden. They're doing fantastically well themselves uh, as well as Reading. But with Nottingham Forest and their manager, I think the manager, if in the next few games they don't get victories, if the, let's just say, so it, maximum you can get out of the next five games for Nottingham Forest is 15 points. If they get um, six points or under, I think even even you know even seven or eight points or under. I think the manager could be under pressure, especially with the money they've invested into that squad over the last couple of years. Um, this is just a continuation from the playoff heartache at the big, at the end of last season, and it's just continued straight through. Derby County, I think it was fair to say Philip Koku was under a lot of pressure. That Wayne Rooney goal salvaged his job, in my opinion. I think Derby County's manager was going to be in the the mix for uh, possible the, uh, the possible first managerial second of the season for the championship uh, if they kept losing and losing. Derby County would probably still be in that relegation zone if it wasn't for uh, winning against Norwich later on. Obviously, you know, Daniel Farke, the Norwich manager, came out and said, you know, that's football, it happens sometimes. Fair enough, Norwich, you know, they need to keep regrouping, keep getting the squad together. I think the big thing for Norwich is keep their best players. You've got to keep the best players to have any chance of getting somewhere near the promotion of the ch of the Premier League. And I think the Championship is going to be very, very close this season because some of the favourites for promotion are further down the table than we expect at this stage. So uh, I think it's definitely going to be a very open season in the Championship. Bournemouth in that early victory, 3-1 against Coventry on Friday. Uh, very, very good victory. I think that Jason Tindall was the right man for the job for Bournemouth, in my opinion, um, because you know he he's the assistant to Eddie Howe when before Eddie Howe left by mutual consent. Um, but I think that Jason Tindall will definitely be the good man for Bournemouth to take them back up to the Premier League the first time of asking if they are attempting it. But Bristol City and Reading, they're the, the pace setters at the minute. Uh, so there we go. So let's go into League One now with the latest scores from Saturday and your overall league table. AFC Wimbledon 1, Accrington Stanley 2. 
Blackpool 2, Lincoln City 3. Bristol Rovers 2, Northampton Town 0. Burton Albion 2, Portsmouth 4. Charlton Athletic 0, Sunderland 0. Hull City 1, Plymouth Argyle 0. Ankadons 1, Ipswich Town 1. Oxford United, Crew Alexandra was postponed due to a COVID-19 case. Peterborough United 3, Swindon Town 1. Rochdale 2, Fleetwood Town 1. Shrewsbury Town 1, Gillingham 1. And Wigan Athletic 1, Doncaster Rovers 0. So heading into the League 1 table and the dropped points for Ipswich to MK Dons means that Lincoln and Hull are the 100% records in the League 1 table. Sunderland go ahead of Doncaster after their 1-0 defeat to Wigan. Uh, Sunderland getting a point against Charlton made sure that they were a point ahead of Doncaster and Gillingham have gone up to the same points total as Doncaster now after their result. Swindon, Peterborough and Accrington make up the rest of that nine. Into the next half of the table, Wigan start the uh, start this at the end of this Saturday going into next weekend in 10th place on six points after grabbing that victory. Portsmouth in 11th place there. And you can see teams like Wimbledon, Plymouth, Charlton after that draw with uh, Sunderland. Bristol Rovers getting their first win of the campaign at Northampton. Northampton back-to-back -back defeats now, uh, which means they're in 16th. Rochdale getting the uh, win over Fleetwood and Oxford, who are still yet to play their next game. Of course, with the postponement of crew due to positive COVID-19 cases, they sit 18th. You're probably thinking, where's crew? Well, they're 20th. Um, of course, still yet to play the game because of the positive COVID cases. And Shrewsbury ahead of them on 19th. That's who Doncaster have next if it's not postponed. If it is, then it'll be Portsmouth for Doncaster next. And in that relegation zone on goal difference, you've got Blackpool, Fleetwood and Burton Albion. And MK Don sitting at the bottom of the table on just two points. But it was a crucial point against one of the early promotion favourites in Ipswich Town. So some big, big, big results going into that. And like I was just saying there, if Shrewsbury gets postponed to a later date, Doncaster's next fixture is away at Portsmouth. And after the way they performed against Burton Albion in that game uh, at the Pirelli Stadium, I definitely think that Portsmouth's going to be a big task. They've just come off the back of this big win. I think they're facing Wigan next weekend. So it's going to be a tough one for Port... Well, it's going to be a tough one for Wigan and in fact, no, they just beat... Why am I thinking they're facing Wigan? They just beat them, for goodness sake. Um, <laughs> but, no, whoever Portsmouth's got next weekend, you know, I think that they're going to go into it with a lot of confidence. And I think that uh, with Marcus Harness especially. Oh, my God, that guy. I was watching the highlights of that. That hat-trick from Marcus Harness. What an incredible hat-trick for the guy. Uh, former Burton player as well, getting a hat-trick against your former club. You know, and I was watching the EFL on Quest show again last night. And again, and Michael Brown, former Port Vale player, was reporting with Colin Murray. And uh, Ali Maxwell came in for League One, League Two. And they were talking about Marcus Harness. And I definitely, and you know, I think Michael Brown's played with Marcus Harness or managed him with Marcus Harness uh, when he was uh, on loan at Port Vale from Burton at some point. And, you know, Marcus Harness with that brilliant hat trick. I saw the highlights back. I mean, the goals were just brilliant. I mean, the back heel for the second goal from the set piece, and then uh, the third goal, just wow. The, t the turn, it was like, the th I don't know if the ball went through his legs or just past him, but the turn and then the quick run to go past him and slot it in. Oh my goodness, that guy. Um, he's a very underrated talent. Um, Charlton Sunderland, I think it was very mixed to that game. I think that both sides just didn't have the quality to finish. Of course, Charlton have their new owner now, Thomas Sangard. It was the first game under the Sangard era officially um, against Sunderland. And a 0-0 draw is fair enough on the basis of it, but I think Charlton should have took their chance a bit more. Uh, of course, they have their new signing on the bench, Marcus Madison, uh, who was brought in. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a considerable building process for Charlton. Speaking of new owners, Wigan have their brand new owners pretty much all but confirmed now. Uh, they've accepted the bid from the Spanish owners. These uh, And according to reports, they are very good. They've got the finances to back it up. If the EFL reject this, then... It, there's, there's clearly some crime in football here with the EFL if they're not going to accept someone who's got considerable finances to run a football club. It, I, I don't know. Maybe they're not good businessmen, so maybe they won't bring in good advert revenues, which means they won't be good enough for their league. But I don't know. I'm probably joking with that. But, you know, it, we don't know with the EFL. There could be a crime in football for all week. Well, in fact, we know they're a crime in football. But with Wigan, I definitely think that, you know, we're looking here at, you know, a considerable pro building process like uh, Charlton Athletic. 
Doncaster, my club, as you guys know, we lost 1-0 to the Wigan side. And uh, we didn't take our chance in the first half. And it came back to bite us on the backside in the second half. And um, we felt we could have got something out of it. But if we took our chances a bit more, then... You know, it's going to be, uh, it's going it, to, we need to improve. We definitely need to improve for Shrewsbury next weekend if it doesn't get postponed. Obviously, three players on international call, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but I think that if Shrewsbury is going to go ahead next week, um, obviously, it's going to take a couple of days to assess the squad and see what happens. But if it's Shrewsbury next weekend, then uh, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Um, I think they'll put out a week aside Doncaster against Oldham on Tuesday. Of course, don't forget you can tune in tomorrow for my match preview for the EFL Trophy match against Oldham Athletic away from home, uh, where I'll give you some details about Oldham, etc., etc. But uh, with Doncaster, I think we're going to put out a week aside against Oldham on Tuesday, and then we're going to play. Uh, our first team probably against Shrewsbury on Saturday. Uh, but it should be an interesting one. Uh, let's go then into League 2. Check out the scores and then check out the table. Carlisle United 1, Barrow 0. Colchester United 3, Oldham Athletic 3. Crawley Town 1, Southend United 1. Exeter City 2, Cambridge United 0. Forest Green Rovers 1, Walsall 1. Harrogate Town 1, Bolton Wanderers 2. Leighton Orient 0, Cheltenham Town 2. Morecambe 1, Port Vale 0. Newport County 2, Mansfield Town 1. Stevenage 0, Salford City 1. And Tranmere Rovers 2, Scunthorpe United 0. Finally then in terms of tables, let's check out that League 2 table. And Newport County sit top of the league with 10 points. And who would have expected this in second place? A point behind first, Morecambe. One of the relegation favourites, but what a job the Morecambe manager has done with that team. They sit second, Salford behind them. They're one of the promotion candidates, of course, on eight points. In the playoff spots, Cambridge dropped down to fourth, with Port Vale in fifth, losing their unbeaten start to the season. Exeter and Crawley make up the rest of the playoff spots. Cheltenham and Colchester sit just outside. Forest Green against Walsall was the 200,000th EFL game to be kicked off. They sit 10th place with Walsall there in 14th place, just four points below the Rovers. Carlisle, Harrogate and Bradford fill the gaps between Forest Green and Walsall with Tranmere, Stevenage, Orient and Scunthorpe below them. And in those final six places, Grimsby is still two games in hand, still haven't got a point this season. They could be in trouble. Southern United picked up their first point of the campaign and they sit just inside the last relegation spot with Oldham outside on goal difference. Barrow with two points as well as Mansfield Town who were the early promotion favourites. Bolton Wanderers on three points picking up that victory at the Keepmo Stadium which is Harrogate's temporary uh, home fixture uh, ground uh, but Bolton finally getting that first win under the new manager Ian Ebbett. So there we go big ones there in League 2 Carlisle United Barrow the first Cumbria derby I guess um, in um, in so many years so so many years and you know Carlisle United got the 1-0 win and um, you know Barrow just couldn't find that equaliser there was a massive collision in the second half with two players and uh, he was stretched off, and that gave them about 12 minutes of injury time, which Barrow, I think, should have taken advantage of. Uh, and the best chance coming from Scott Quigley, I believe it was, and uh, just didn't take it, in my opinion. Uh, but apart from that, Barrow just didn't take advantage of the massive amount of stoppage time they had available to them, and Colin Knight got three points. Um, South End United's a tough one for me. They picked up their first point, 1-1 draw against Crawley uh, yesterday, and... With Southend United, I definitely think that there's room for improvement still. There's definitely room for improvement. And with Southend United, I absolutely 100% think that the winding up order and the stuff that's happening off the field is definitely affecting stuff on field. Same with Oldham Athletic. A 3-3 draw with Colchester is a good point with, you know where Colchester are predicted to finish. They're predicted to be one of the promotion favourites. Uh, so I think that a good point for Oldham there. But again... Off-field problems are really affecting, you know, the on-field uh, on field, and, um, you know, the fans, I mean, there was like a statement from the club, and I think the fans really, you know, badly reacted to that last week, and fair enough to the fans, it, it was it was fair enough to react to it um, in a bad way, because the st it, it, it just, off-field problems dominate on-field situations, and... You know, it could spin it one or two ways. And I think it's just spun it the wrong way for both Southend and Oldham. 
Uh, Bolton getting their first win under Ian Everett, uh, the brand new manager this season, of course, coming from uh, promoter Barrow. Uh, 2 1 winner Harrogate, of course, Harrogate using the Keepmoat Stadium, our stadium, Donny River Stadium, as the uh, temporary home ground for their first couple of home fixtures while they lay the turf that's EFL standard for their current home ground back in Harrogate. So. Hope you enjoyed your stay at the Keepmo, Harrogate, because you're going back now. Because <laughs> uh, I think it's, I think it's only the first two like home fixtures of the season they use it, so they'll be back in Harrogate for their next home fixture. Um, and overall, I mean, the big surprise package has got to be um, Morecambe. I think Morecambe are absolutely flying at the minute. Morecambe were, you know, hosting an, a Port Vale side that were unbeaten. They were they were flying. They were unbeaten in what eleven games? I think it was like eleven away games that were unbeaten. Um, and, you know, Morecambe just eliminated that with a 1-0 win. Even though it was just 1-0, I think that Morecambe did play some really good football. Look at the highlights. And, the man like I said, the manager's doing an incredible job with Morecambe. So long may that continue. If Morecambe get promoted to League One, I not only do I worry... I, I mean, obviously, you've got to worry if they do get promoted to League One. Obviously, it's very, it's very early to say. But if they do get promoted to League One, then you've got to look at that and think, well, hang on a minute, what can they do in League One? How can they spend? Because they don't want to spend too much. They don't want to pay much wages because, of course, you know, that's not good. The parachute payments of relegation, if they go back down to League Two, is not going to save them. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And I think, you know, let's just continue keeping our eye on the progress of Morecambe. Um, Salford, again, um, it's nice to see them uh, in the top three. Uh, class of 92 owning the club, so it's nice to see them, you know, in the hunt for a promotion spot. Forest Green Walsall, that was a big one. That was the 200,000th EFL game, English Football League game, to kick off, which was amazing. 1-1 uh, draw, um, you know, so it's not the most entertaining of scorelines for the 200,000th kickoff. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Um, so there we go. So that is looking at the Championship, League One, League Two. Uh, and now it's time to predict the League One scores uh, for next weekend. So we're going to have to kick off on Friday the 9th of October at a quarter to eight at the evening. Fleetwood host Hull. Fleetwood in the relegation zone. Hull, one of the 100% starters to the season. Fleetwood have not come out of the box firing at the minute, have they? Uh, under Joey Barton. And on the opposite side, the former Doncaster Rovers manager, Grant McCann, will give him credit. He's, he's done well with this Hull side. You know, you know, Rovers fans, you know, they'll be on social media. Grant McCann's a snake. He's this, he's that. You know, he didn't leave the club in the best way. You know, he said he was going to stay and then, you know, he, he left. But, you know, it's over now. What can you do? You might hold a grudge, but you can't hold it forever. Grudges don't last a lifetime. Managers do. The current ones do. And we've got a good manager now. So we can just put that to one side. We can't forget it, of course, but we can put it to one side and keep our thoughts aside. But I'll give credit where credit's due. Grant McCann's doing very, very well with this Hull City side. And I could see a 3-0 win for Hull City. I really don't think Fleetwood's going to come off the blocks. And I think four, five, six more defeats or draws even, if a couple of draws are in there, I think if Fleetwood stay in the relegation zone for the next six, seven games, I think Joe Barton could be one of the first managers to go in League One. Uh, then we're moving to Saturday the 10th of October. Gillingham versus Oxford at one o'clock. That is an interesting um, start to the season. Uh, um, that's a very interesting kickoff time. Uh, but Gillingham Oxford, this is going to be again another interesting one. I think Gillingham under Steve Evans is doing quite well. Ox, well, they're in the playoff spots. They're doing very, very well. Oxford United, of course, they didn't play against Crew due to Crew's a uh, couple of positive COVID nineteen cases. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if their game against Wigan goes ahead at three o'clock as well on that Saturday. But with o Gillingham Oxford, I think Gillingham will just have the edge over Oxford. I think it's going to be a 2 1 win to Gillingham. At Crinton against Rochdale at, at 3 o'clock. This is the start of the 3 o'clock kickoffs. And um, at Crinton getting that win over Wimbledon very, very late. Uh, Rochdale getting the surprise win over Fleetwood. I think it'd be a surprise to some, but I think looking at the table now, I think it's become a bit unnecessary for Fleetwood. Uh, but. Uh, Accrington, I think they're going to be a good side to, to break down Rochdale. I think Rochdale, though, under Brian Barry Murphy, you know, that's how it's pronounced. Um, um, I think that he's, he's done an incredible job. Um, I think, especially in that win, especially in that win yesterday against Fleetwood, I think that uh, the... Um, 
the manager of, of Rochdale, Brian Barry Murphy, has done an incredible job. And I think that if you can just galvanise that squad again uh, on Saturday, I think they could come away with something here. Uh, but it will be tough because you're coming up against an Accrington side that just won't quit. So I think it's going to be a 1-1 draw, but I think it's going to be an entertaining 1-1 draw. I think the entertainment will not tell on the scoreline, but it will tell on the pitch, in my opinion, with this one. Crew Wigan, uh, I have a bad feeling this might this one might get postponed, but just in case if it does or doesn't, I'm going to predict a 2-0 win for Wigan. I think Crew will come at them off the blocks, but I think that Wigan will build on the victory against Doncaster yesterday, and I think it will be another Wigan victory. Uh, now, Doncaster Shrewsbury, if this one doesn't get postponed due to three international call-ups for Danny Amos, uh, Joseph Bursick, and Tyrese John Jules, if this one doesn't get postponed, then I think we're going to look here at a 3-0 Doncaster victory. I think Shrewsbury getting that point against uh, Gillingham uh, was a good point for Sam Ricketts' side. I think that Sam Ricketts is a good manager. Don't get me wrong. He's a good manager. Uh, but I don't think his side will have enough to uh, to take out of Doncaster. So I think that Doncaster will come back fighting, will get a 3-0 win, and will get back off the winning blocks. Lincoln Bristol Rovers. Bristol Rovers getting that first win of the campaign yesterday against Northampton 2 0. Lincoln edging the victory over Blackpool, but I'm not going to lie, it was probably one of the toughest fixtures of Lincoln's campaign uh, yesterday. I think it was definitely one of the toughest fixtures that Lincoln's faced this season so far. Uh, but this one, I think, is going to be a tough one as well. I think Bristol Rovers are a good team. I think they're going to uh, come off fighting. And I think it's going to be a good one. So I'm going to go with a 2-1 Lincoln victory. But I don't think it's going to be easy again for Lincoln City to keep that 100% start to the season. Northampton, Peterborough at six fields. Now Northampton coming off that 2-0 defeat to Bristol Rovers yesterday. Peterborough coming off that 3-1 win over Fleetwood, turning it round completely with the help of Johnson Clark Carris. And those first couple of goals for Johnson Clark Carris is going to keep his campaign up and going. It's going to completely fire him up. And I think that Clark Carris is going to come firing off the block. So I think Northampton will get another back-to-back -back defeat. And I'm looking here at a 3-1 win again for Peterborough. Next up... Plymouth Argyle, Burton Albion. Now, this one will be a tough one to predict because Plymouth Argyle, don't get me wrong, they play incredible football, but they just haven't got the results to show for it at times. And Burton Albion under Jake Buxton, he, they'll want to rectify that 4-2 defeat to Portsmouth. And um, I think that Burton may do that, but Plymouth will have something to say about it. So I'm going to go with a very entertaining 2-2 draw. Uh, point of peace, in my opinion, for that one. Portsmouth versus MK Dons. MK Dons picked up a vital point against Ipswich Town, one of the top six uh, predicted uh, yesterday at the stadium MK. Portsmouth, they're hosting them at Fratton Park next Saturday at 3 o'clock and uh, getting off that 4-2 win at Burton Albion is going to be good for Portsmouth and Pompey. Will it turn the situation around for Kenny Jacket and the managerial situation? It will be interesting. But... Um, you know, Portsmouth, I think this is going to be a good one. So I think I'm going to look here at a 2-1 victory to Portsmouth. I think it will be tough. I think MK Dons will have the ball, but I think Portsmouth will take the chances. Finally, Swindon against Wimbledon. Um, I think this is going to be a tough one as well because Wimbledon want to get back to winning ways and Swindon Town do not want to concede a late, late, late winner because Swindon were leading... At, why was, why was I saying Peterborough were playing Fleetwood? <laughs> uh, they were playing Swindon, sorry. It was Fleetwood that was playing Rochdale. I got the cue confused earlier. But um, I definitely think that looking on the base of it, Swindon Town, you know, they, they were 1 0 up. They conceded late. Fleetwood, you know, they got the chances against Rochdale. So, you know, it, it was tough to predict because they were both kind of similar situations. But Swindon, going on ahead, Swindon. Um, I think that they're going to be a decent side. I think that they're going to be uh, a decent opp opposition for AC Wimbledon. But I think this is going to be a tough one. So, again, I'm looking at a stalemate here. I'm Well, not a, not a stalemate because that's New Zealand nil-nil draw. I'm looking at a colourful draw. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw for this one. And uh, I think that it's going to be a close one between two teams that could go back to winning ways. So that's my predictions for the League One scorelines. Now, I did forget to talk about something with the Championship. And it's sort of summarising my thoughts. Just to summarise this whole section of, this, of the episode. Um, championship, done very, very well. Um, very good fixtures. Hopefully teams can bounce back. Barnsley, you know, is it going to happen with Gerard Struber? Is he going to lead to New York? I mean, it's very tough, this situation, but... Uh, if he is going to leave, then I think that he shouldn't have taken charge of that game against Middlesbrough. I think it was just a complete 
pile of pressure, especially with it being the 1500th Neil Warnock game. So uh, congratulations to Neil Warnock if he ends up watching this. Um, and uh, League One, again, great fixtures. Teams need to bounce back. Couple of managerial situations changing. Maybe some managers that were under the pressure, maybe not so much as they were the previous week. Uh, and a couple of managers started to enter that bit of pressure, you know. Uh, Doncaster, for example, I think that Darren Moore has got to really revitalise that squad going into next week and hopefully we can get the win back. Um, and League 2, uh, like I said, some some really big surprise packages in there. Of course, Newport's still top, but for how much longer is Cambridge going to bounce back? Salford going to uh, get a victory to get ahead? Morecambe, the surprise package, of course. Um, you know, and there's other teams that will probably enter that promotion race later on in the season. Forest Green... Colchester, uh, Cheltenham, you know, uh, Exeter and Port Vale might start rising up the table a bit more as well. And in terms of relegation, Grimsby, I think, will get out of it. I think they'll they'll get some results somewhere. I think it's going to be Southend and Oldham that's going to be, you know, battling out in the relegation zone around Christmas time because the off-field problems just aren't changing, in my opinion. So there we go. So that is my sum up of Championship League One and League Two. Don't forget there are afternoon kickoffs in the Championship uh, today. Uh, so stay tuned for them um, across all devices. I guess you can change, stay tuned to the iFollow. There'll be some radio commentary or something uh, on the Brentford and the Birmingham games. But let's talk about the reaction to the Doncaster Rovers defeat from Darren Moore. So I've got some comments from the free press statement and also some comments that I picked up from the official Doncaster Rovers YouTube channel video and what he said to the channel um, on the back of this defeat. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit later about the uh, Shrewsbury clash and should it be postponed. So let's talk about Darren Moore's comments after the Wigger match. So Darren Moore released the free press statement. Um, I picked up all the quotes that he's put towards the free press and he said, It is just setting standards. If anyone knows me, they know the standards that I set. I thought last week we could have been another three, maybe four goals better to the good. And then today, you can see that they've only had two attempts on our goal. And I said at half time we should be two or three goals to the good. My coaching staff said we could have been four or five to the good. It shows the state of things, and I'm very disappointed because I don't like giving away games, and we've given one away today. And then he went and said to the Doncaster Rovers official YouTube channel uh, after the match, Probably the biggest fact today was not putting our chance away, really. We felt the game should have been out of sight at half time. We should have put the game out of sight. Um, which was, uh, to be fair, and I think that's a statement that I think many of us, you know, share with Darren Moore. So there we go. So that's looking a little bit into uh, the statements that he put out. And I, I agree with those statements. I think that after the first half, we should have been two or three in front. I think we didn't put our chances away. And, you know, I said going into this game, we need to be more clinical, especially in the first half. And that was the one thing I took away from the 4-0 win against Bristol Rovers. We need to be more clinical. We need to be more... Uh, composed with our chances, more quick one-twos, more clinical with our chances, and we need to put more chances away instead of choosing wrong options or putting them wide or not putting enough power on them or not testing the goalkeeper. Because there was a couple of occasions where we tested the goalkeeper, Jamie Jones, and there was a couple of occasions where we could have and probably should have scored with a different kind of you know shooting option uh, or the placement of the shoot of the shot, but. You know, I think that we have to take lessons away from this. It is the first defeat of the season. We're still in the top five. So, you know, there is positives out of it that, you know, not everyone's going to win every game of the season. We haven't had an unbeaten team since Arsenal. I mean, I think there was like a non-league team a few years ago. But in terms of like the top professional football, I think, you know, the Arsenal Invincibles. And then before that, it was the, the Preston Invincibles. So we do need to take that into consideration that no one's going to win every game of the season. There will be, even the title winners will probably lose like two, three, even four games in the season. So no one is invincible until it's absolutely, you know, proven. And, you know, we, we are going to lose a couple of games this season. We just need to make sure that winning record completely landslides away the losing record or the drawing record. So we need to get more wins than draws and losses, otherwise we're not going to be higher up on the table. We are going to def have defeats at some points, and there are going to be times where we have to pick ourselves up. And that's why this is the biggest test of the season so far this early on, because we were going on an absolute roll. We were unbeaten in four, uh, well, unbeaten in three technically, and uh, came to match week four, and we lost one now. Didn't take our chances, and then Wigan took that one chance out of a couple and all it takes is one chance out of a couple 
and that might sneak a victory. So, this is our beast test of the season because, one, it's Wigan. We can't take them lightly. They get, they get the brand new owner situation announcement this past week, so they're going to be in fine form. And as well as that, off the back of this, it is our biggest test so far because now we have to mentally get ourselves ready for Oldham on Tuesday and then Shrewsbury if it's not postponed on Saturday. So it's going to be a big test for Rovers. Now, speaking about the Shrewsbury game, to end today's DRFC Daily Report, we're going to be checking out uh, more statements towards if Shrewsbury could be postponed and then share my thoughts on whether I think Shrewsbury will be postponed or not. So, the statement from Darren Moore, officially from the Free Press, states that nothing has been decided on the game as yet. It'll be about picking the bones out of Saturday's game and not looking too far ahead because we've got another game on Tuesday and we're looking into that. Looking forward to that. Um, I've not really given it a lot of thought because you know me, I only focus on the next one. What I will say is both Joe, Joe, of course, talking about uh, jo um, jo Joseph Bursick and uh, Tyrese John Jules, Tyrese, uh, going and Danny too, of course, Danny Amos. It gives the opportunity for one or two others to step in and stake a claim. We feel that we've got the bodies to do that. We have a look at the game. We'll analyse it and we'll see what the state of the squad is for making the decision. Congratulations to them. Now, this is talking about, of course, uh, their call-up to the squads. Uh, congratulations to them. It shows the level and the pedigree that they are. And we wish them well away representing their countries. Hopefully, they'll come back to us fit and healthy. So, there we go. That is the statement officially from Darren Moore about going into uh, the Shrewsbury match. He's not going to look at it at this stage. He's going to take a day or two to analyse the squad. Going into the Tuesday fixture with Oldham, see what we need to do, and then call whether we need to postpone it or not uh, with the three or more eligible international call-ups. First of all, massive congratulations to Joseph Bursick, Tyrese John Jules, and also to uh, Danny Amos for your international call-ups to England and Northern Ireland under squads, respectively. Bursick to the England under 21s, John Jules to the England under 20, and also to the Danny Amos for the Northern Ireland under 21 squad. Um, so, congratulations to them. I mean, if it is going to get postponed, I mean, sharing my thoughts on it, I think that it probably won't get postponed. I think we are going to put, you know, it's, it's going to give Lewis Jones minutes. He's going to, maybe he's going to put, uh, he's going to keep Reese James at left back for the Shrewsbury game, so I think there's no change really there. Uh, it's just goalkeeper and forward, really. I think it's going to give Lewis Jones minutes. It's going to give Fajiri Okanabiri a start. Uh, on the bench, there's not many other attacking options. That's where we have to look at this next day and think of the transfer window. But I've got a feeling that we're not going to be doing any more business. Uh, so I probably will do a transfer summary after Monday uh, going into uh, the, the, the rest of this first half of the season without a transfer window to focus on. So it is going to be a tough one. But... There we go. So thank you very much for watching this jam-packed DRFC Daily Report. Um, match week four is done. There's still a couple of games today to be played. Uh, there's a Premier League game. Well, there's loads of Premier League games going on today, like Man U Spurs, Arsenal Sheffield United. Good luck to AFTV and Arsenal for that game. Um, you know, there's going to be some big games. I think West Ham's 1-0 up at the minute against Leicester City last time I checked. So I think that uh, that's going to be a good one. Hopefully Leicester City can bounce back, but you know, if West Ham beat them, this could be a big victory for David Moyes. And, um, yeah, big, big stuff coming from there. So, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. By the way, comment down below, because I've done the championship scores and the table, the League 1 scores and table, and League 2 scores and table. Who wants to see me cover the Premier League scores and tables? Com comment down below. Just comment down below. Uh, but for now, guys, I am the CHALL, your content for Donkster Rovers Football Club and the Football League. And for now, guys, have a nice day. I'm always still alive! I'm always still alive!